Hello there, Virgos. Welcome to your tarot reading. I apologize for the delay with this reading for you guys. I was traveling the past uh, week and I got really sick, so um, I was not in the right frame of mind to be doing videos and I didn't want to shortchange you guys so um, I had to wait till I got better so I am sincerely sorry either way I hope this video still resonates with you that it is still relevant in offering you advice so um, when I was shuffling out the spread I saw two images for you um, so first of all the first image that I saw was I see this cliff it's a uh, midnight the moon is out and the moon is this a giant round full moon in the distance okay it's so big it's hovering over the horizon but it's it's humongous and on this cliff is a is a wolf okay and he has like white fur and he's howling to this full moon okay so that's the first thing uh the second image that i saw was uh at a train platform uh, there are two tracks in the middle is like a conductor's booth or a, a ticket booth where people come and get their train tickets and on either side are two train tracks one is for outbound trains one is for incoming trains okay and so there's a, um, a train already stationed at the outbound area so this is for like departure and there are passengers on the train holding and waving their handkerchief and there are people um, on the platform kind of like saying their tearful goodbyes to the passengers on the train. And then the train takes off. And immediately, like clockwork, there's another train that's incoming, that's arriving. And so I'm seeing a series of train departing and then like clockwork, another train arrives. And the image, you know, just, just, um, remain that way another tra one train leaves and another train arrive it's also like it, it feels to me like it's synchronized in such a way where something has to leave so that new things can arrive okay and the new things can arrive until something leaves so that's what it feels like it's very cyclical it's very synchronized it's almost like preordained designed um and, and it seems as if, you know, things are very much like clockwork, which is something you might appreciate because you guys are very punctual and you guys are very efficient with your timing, okay? And you like things to be neat and to be predictable and to be, you know, synchronized, okay? So um, going back to the first message, here's what I'm sensing. And uh, this is something that I've noticed with a lot of Virgos. Um, you guys behave very much like a Capricorn, okay? Um, Capricorns are known as like the lone wolf, okay? They're the lone wolf in the zodiac. And um, they're very stoic. They're very self-contained. And when they make decisions, they don't really, you know, crowdsource, okay? They're not going to ask their mom, their aunt, their uncles. Uh, whether or not they're making a decision. So the way in which they go about life, they're just very much self-contained, self-reliant -re and resourceful. And, you know, they make decisions without a lot of fanfare, without letting people know what they're up to. So in a way, people think they're secretive or stoic, but I feel like that's just the way that the, the Capricorn operate. And I also feel like for you guys, uh, you go about your life, you make decisions, and you're very conscientious about the decisions that you make because Virgos are deeply responsible. You're very responsible to yourself and to other people in that you don't want to hurt other people. You don't want to do things, malicious things, to dig at people, to take cheap shots at people, to hurt other people. Like, you guys are not for that. Um, and I feel like the only time you consider other people in your decision-making process is um, you don't want to make any decisions to, you know, in, in case it, it might hurt the other people, it might, um, um, I, I guess, inconvenience them in some way. So that's the only time where you're conscientious and, and that's the only time when you kind of crowdsource and you ask somebody, is this okay for me to do this, okay? But overall, when you make decisions, you're very stoic and you go about it your own way. And it's done without a lot of fanfare. It's done without a lot of like, um, without having to kick up a dust storm around it, okay? 
And so, in a way, that lone wolf prediction or um, the, the, the depiction, actually, not prediction, the depiction is a lot about you. It's a lot about you listening to that inner calling, okay? Howling to the moon, staying true, especially to that inner voice in your head. And um, I also feel like, you know, being accountable for yourself, your actions, the things that you do and going about things, bearing the burden of responsibilities on your own, not losing your footing, being able to, you know, exist and climb on this um, pedestal, on this cliff on your own and not needing other people, right? So that's what I'm feeling. And so I feel as if there's something that is really nagging at you, okay? This is like a... Uh, an intuitive message or even like a psychic nudge that is really nagging at you because of that um, wolf howling to the moon. Um, it screams out to me a sense of immense longing for something, wanting to call it into being, wanting to manifest it, wanting to create it, wanting to, to I guess like verbalizing what it is that you're calling for, right? So then it comes into the picture. And what I have here is the shaman. And this is about divine wisdom, spiritual power. This is looking at things from a bird's eye view with a higher vantage point so that you can see how all the parts fit together to form a whole. Seeing how things are very interrelated and interconnected so that one decision made will have ripple effects to create, I guess, like a disturbance or even to affect something that is further afield. And so I feel like you come into this holistic understanding about actions and consequences, about how every decision is not made in a vacuum. Something that we do, you know, a few years ago in this part of the world could have long reaching consequences in another part of the world in the present time. So it's, it's almost like being spiritually mindful about the energies that we send out into the universe so that we don't affect things in a negative way. Being responsible and being resourceful and understanding that, you know, energies, resources are very finite. And so we don't take more than we need. We don't deprive other people of limited resources if we're just you know scrambling for resources to hoard and to hog okay so i feel like you're coming into this really in, enlightened state of being where you're starting to understand cause and effect actions and consequences and uh, it's not just you know whatever is exist in your linear time i feel like you're trying to understand how actions and consequences can reverberate through time and when I'm looking at this, I also feel like, you know, this sense of immense wisdom that is coming into your life. I feel almost like there is a situation that you're longing for, you might be clinging to, you might be thinking about the next step, you might be contemplating uh, what is going to be made available to you, what is coming through. And I can assure you, the last two cards are about outcomes, are about, you know, we start the beginning of the month here and eventually we want to end here. And so where you are right now and where you want to be, um, we want to look at all the energies that are kind of like um, affecting, hindering or helping your progress to get you where you need to be. Okay. And so what I have here is the 10 of acorns. This is the 10 of wands. And then I have the star. And the star card signifies, um, it's wish fulfillment, okay? It's being able to achieve whatever it is that we desire. And when it's paired up with this 10 of acorns, 10 of uh, wands, the acorn energy is the wands in, in this deck. It's about unburdening ourselves, letting go of physical belongings, letting go of expectations, letting go of things that are, are, are really bogging us down, making us very heavy. Uh, resentment sometimes, you know, resentment, um, 
clinging on to relationships, clinging on to a way of life, clinging on to possessions, clinging on to, you know, people that we feel very emotionally connected to, even though they might no longer serve a purpose in our lives. So I feel like there's an unburdening process that is happening here. It's associated with the star. So it's, it's kind of like a reminder. You need to unburden. You need to kind of let it go so that you can move on, so that you can travel light, so that you can feel free to be able to attract and to um, manifest, to have new energies come in, to manifest new things and to draw new things to come into the picture. It's like that, that, that platform, right? It's synchronized and it's, it's, it's perfectly designed and engineered where one train leaves and the other train arrives. Okay, so I feel as if there's a message here for you guys. Is there something that you're holding on to very dearly and very tightly and in the process of not allowing yourself to release it, it's preventing things from coming in for you? Okay, so I want you to sit with that just for a moment. Um, I'm drawn to that image where I mentioned, you know, with the train departing. Uh, there are people on the platform, they're saying goodbye to the people that they love. They're saying goodbye, okay? Somebody, who, the passengers in, on that train, they're heading towards their new life. They're heading towards like a new way of living. They're heading far away and the people on the platform are like unable to let go because of that emotional connection. They're unable to, to, you know, like, like let that go. And the train is the catalyst for severing that connection, but also allowing something to take place, allowing something to move forward and progress so that new things can come in. So I feel like Virgos, is there something in your life that is an emotional attachment of yours and it's no longer serving you in this present moment? And for many of you, we have here the Two of Cups. This is a potential relationship, okay? Um, a partnership even. And this is a really, it's like a, a very exalted connection because uh, with the, the Cups energy, it's spiritual and emotional in nature. It's mutual support, it's love, and it's, um, it's friendship built on mutual respect. And what I feel is happening here is for many of you, you started out as the lone wolf, right? And life can feel very, very lonely, right? Um, you're naturally, you know, you, you guys are a very shy sign. Like typically, you don't want to be the center of attention. You're not like the wisecracking, you know, the, the busybody, the one that um, needs to be in the limelight. That, that's not you. And I feel like, you know, you go through your life as this lone wolf and you've transformed. You, you've met like um, a group of people that you are really emotionally tied to. It could be a work environment. It could be someone who's very dependent on you. It could be like a mutual situation where it's not toxic or unhealthy, but it's sort of like a really strong emotional connection. And you're unable to change your way of life to, you know, move out of your location, to get a new job, to get a promotion, to progress, to want more. It's something that could potentially take up a lot of your time and energy and resources. And it's disallowing you from having the, the, that finite resource to devote to yourself. And so we are seeing this shedding of the, you know, the, the lone wolf energy because you're in a partnership or you're in a situation that is demanding a lot more of your time and you're preoccupied with it. You, you go to work and that's the first thing you experience in the day. You go to sleep at night and that's the last thing you think about. So I feel like it, it is really energetically pulling you. And I also feel like it's, um, there's a lot of warmth. There's a lot of, you know, um, I, I feel like it's a really good connection. But then I also feel like it's preventing more things from coming in for you. 
Okay, it doesn't mean that this is a somebody that's consciously making a decision to block your blessings. I don't feel that it's that is that way, but I feel energetically, it's um a little bit of a burden, on an energetic level because energy is very finite. You know, it's not unlimited, right? We can only devote certain amount of energies to certain things, and we can devote a certain amount of thoughts to certain things, and so you want to be focused with your goals, your plans, your actions as an individual so that you can, you know, bring things closer to you that you really want. So I feel like there's something here about how being as a unit, as a as a couple, as a unit, as a as a partner in a partnership, uh it brings about a lot of blessings, but I feel like something has also run its course where the obvious decision is to kind of walk away from it okay and i feel that i'm seeing um i'm seeing a um like a female wolf okay she might be pregnant and um or she might have given birth because i'm seeing like the young ones in a cave okay in the crevice of a tree in a cave and then she's outside scouting and looking for food so i feel as if somebody is going out scouting somebody is venturing out into the world they're exiting a a place of safety they're going out into the world to go scouting to scope out the environment to see what life has to offer to see what else is available and then i'm feeling somebody is like drawing them back in like no don't do that uh, don't leave me. Don't go there. Don't, uh, you know. Um, so I'm getting here. Somebody is afraid that you're going to leave. Somebody is afraid. And I feel like the energies, of course, can be switched. Because on the flip side of being the lone wolf is, uh, you know, being very connected. You might have an emotional connection to somebody. And you're afraid that they're venturing out and not coming back. You're afraid that troubles and, and dangers will befall them. You're afraid that they might be, um, I want to say, like, lured away from the cave, lured away from their path back to you. So I feel like there's a situation here where somebody is um, thriving better with independence and an the other person is disallowing that independence. Okay, so it's like, you know, uh, when somebody's old enough, they need to fly the nest. And if you're in a position where you can guide them so that you can um, steer them away from danger, you want to do that rather than holding them back, rather than <coughs> not letting them develop to their full potential. So I, I definitely feel like there's a situation here. It's done out of love. It's done out of that sense of safety and protection, but it can feel a little bit like we're overreaching or overstepping our boundaries or we're not really doing the other person a favor because they need to venture out and and kind of like experience life on their own so i want you to look at this this combination okay this is like i gotta go out i gotta find food i have to go uh scope out the territory i have to figure out you know where the food source is so it's kind of like an anteater and this is an armadillo reaching out his hand, almost like, no, don't go, his or her hand. No, don't go, don't leave me here. I'm kind of stuck here. This is thorny, I don't want to be here. And you know, it's like, if you're gonna go, please come back, okay? So I, I feel like it's a tearjerker. It's like the, the tearful goodbyes. But with the train, you know, one train is departing, the other one is arriving. Everything is very cyclical. It's going to come full circle, right? So that basically means that they're going to go off and do their own thing. And then one day, they're going to come back around. So they have to leave first for them to return. And so I feel like this is really telling you to allow things and situations to change, to understand that, you know, um, we have to let something go. If we love something, we have to let it go. We have to let the other person go to find their own life's calling. And if 
destiny takes them back to us then it's meant to be right so it's like loving with an open hand okay not a closed fist but like an open hand so that we can allow the best opportunities to come in for ourselves and for the other person so that we both can grow otherwise it, it gets very stifled and claustrophobic and and just you know it couldn't it could potentially turn very toxic okay I feel for many of you, you might be dealing with somebody who might have had um, their fair share of abandonment issues. Okay, so like, um, I feel that you have pretty much been like an anchor in their life. You're like the, the pillar of stability. You're the anchor. You're the person that they have always depended on. And when you say you're going to go, I'm going to be gone, you tell them exactly, I'm going to be gone half an hour, I'll come back. And sure enough, half an hour later, you always come back. So you're kind of like that pillar of strength and stability in their life. You're the one thing that is very predictable in, in, in their life. And I also feel like for some of you, um, it's like clockwork. They're so used to having you around. And I feel like they might have taken it for granted. They might have um, not seen the value in you properly. They might have um, I'm also hearing like uh, downplay your importance in their life. Everything that they've achieved in life, I feel like you know they might have credited themselves rather than credited you. okay And so I, what I sense is, if you're exiting the picture, now they're just like coming to this realization, this awareness that don't go, I can't do this on my own. I can't be here on my own. And I feel that you've grown bigger, too big for the cave, too big for that little crevice in the tree where the two of you have been hol holding up or where they have been holding up. They're trying to get you back in and it's like, no, I don't live in a tree. You know, I, I'm made to live in a mansion. I'm made to live in a place that is warm, that is lit. I can't live in a dark, dank environment and thrive. And so, you know, I, I feel like for many of you, turning your back on a toxic person, turning your back on a person who has abandonment issues and who is taking it out on you, um, as well as, you know, throwing tantrum, like, um, temper tantrums in order to get their way as well okay and that's for a very small minority of you because i do feel like there is a connection here that is very exalted two people are better off like um working together but for whatever reason i feel like you have outgrown this connection and you're well prepared knight of swords you're well prepared to take what you have learned and apply it into your world, charting your own path and creating your own vision. And you might have uh, no need for this connection anymore. And not to sound like somebody who is, you know, um, a user or anything like that, but I just feel like, you know, that, that's the way things are meant um, to play out in this connection. Another thing, so this is pretty much um, another thing that I was getting messages on is this. Okay, going back to the wolf howling at the moon. Um, I feel like for Virgo people, okay, and I, I, I'm sensing like the way that it's um, playing out in this spread. We have the world here, and this is like the world is your oyster. There are so many possibilities, okay, and you're the whale here you're capable of moving into deep waters. You're capable of seeing all the things, all the sea creatures that are lying beneath, okay? Whales also come back for air and they blow water out of their, you know, the spout or um, I guess the blowhole and they surface for air. And every time they surface for air, they do that splash that is really, a, a, it's, it's an amazing sight. Right? So I feel like you are capable of surviving on the surface as well as underwater. And what I mean by this is I feel like there's somebody who only exists in one realm. 
they have trouble connecting, they have trouble relating, they have a lot of trouble sympathizing, understanding, and, and seeing the whole picture. But I feel like you are a creature of both worlds where you're able to make sense of things. You're able to see the big picture, like I mentioned before. And so life for you is a series of exploration, okay? Virgo is still, um, it's, it's still a fairly um, young, air, um, I'm sorry, earth sign. It's still a fairly young earth sign. And so it's, it's asking you to embody this playful energy in the spirit of newness, in the spirit of exploration. For many of you, it can seem very scary, right? It can seem really scary to dive deep into deep waters where you might not be able to breathe, where you not, might not be able to see, where there, there could be, you know, dangers um, that you can't really foresee and escape from. However, you're the whale, you're big, okay? And so little critters are not going to mess with you pretty much. And so I feel like your persona is really big. Your capabilities are very big. And that means in any situation that you find yourself in, you're going to be able to get out of it intact. And in every work environment, let's just use that as an analogy because I feel like you can understand me better. Um, in every work environment, no matter what tasks your superiors give you, you learn it, you do it well, and then soon you become an expert, right? And so you might have gone in, you know, at the very beginning, feeling very afraid, apprehensive. Am I good enough? Am I able to um, do it justice, do the work justice? Am I going to let them down? Am I capable of doing this? Am I smart enough? So you have all of these self-doubts, you know, raging in your head. And then pretty soon you become a master at whatever task they entrust you with. So the same thing applies here where it's like, yes, you're charting unknown territory, but look at your track record in the past. Have you ever let anyone down? Have you ever not been able to do something? Have you ever had to throw in the towel? Have you ever had to, you know, accept that failure is an option? I, I don't feel like that's the case. And so knowing that about yourself and knowing that about your history, I feel like there's a situation here where you're going to have to dive really deep. You're going to have to go through a process of exploration to figure out what is a good fit, to figure out what you need to master, to figure out as well where you belong. And so <clears throat> where I'm going with this is, um, you know, life is a series of uh, departures and arrivals, right? We master something and then we move on. That is the lone wolf mentality, okay? It's not about staying in one place so that trackers can find you, fur traders can be able to track your footprints or paw prints and to be able to hunt you for fur, okay? So we have to adapt a little bit more of a nomadic lifestyle. Um, it's not about being on the run or constantly running from something or moving from something. But it's about, you know, um, shifting from one location to the next, uh, being a little bit versatile and understanding, especially once I have delved deep and I, once I have mastered something, it's time for me to move on to the next thing. Some of you, and I've, I, I felt this, you know, especially last year, 2016, and then also 2019, um, I guess, last year, 2016, especially, and then 2019. Many of you, you have a big persona, okay? And this is not about arrogance. This is like, um, it, it's like a oversight, like an oversized brain. You manage to cram in a lot of things. You manage to learn a lot of things really, really fast. And um, you're, you have become very like mentally, very agile and very versatile. And so new projects, new things, new expectations coming through from other people they don't really phase you. At first you're afraid, but then after a while you realize it's just the same thing. You have cracked 
a code when it comes to learning new information, storing new information, and you've done it in a way where other people haven't really mastered this. And, and so if you're aware of that, and if you can <coughs> write a book about how that's done, what your process is, it would help a lot of people. Because I feel like people don't really know how to synthesize new knowledge, okay? But you do, and a lot of what you're doing is like, um, you're, you're dealing with a new task, and you're relying on something that you've learned in the past that is very similar to what you're doing here. And you're making those connections, and that's why, you know, assimilating um, new information for you is very simple. If you can find a way to articulate that in a book in a um, or even like you know in a panel in a discussion it would be really beneficial for other people to hear because I feel like they haven't mastered that but you have and so really look at you know let's not stay in one place for too long let's not stay and and, um, and, and uh, give ourselves away you know, let, let's let not let the hunters and the fur traders be high on our trail and to smell our scent and to be able to track us down. Okay, so that, that's what I'm feeling here. It's, um, it's a process of understanding when something has already reached its apex, when it's time to let go, and when it's time to, you know, allow something new to come in. Okay, so... New things cannot come in unless we depart, unless we let go, all right? And so to tie in with the rest of your reading, I have here the moon and the king of swords. The moon is all about imagination, perception, sixth sense, and intuition, right? Um, what I'm feeling here is with this King of Swords, okay, this is a uh, an air energy. This is all about the mental space, the realm. This is somebody who's very firm with their beliefs. They're unwavering. They can be a little bit dogmatic. They can be a little bit defensive with what they know, what they believe in, and they might not be able to hear an alternative discourse. Like they, they just can't uh, accept or listen to something that um, that is a different viewpoint or different mindset. So this is someone who's very, very protective of their knowledge. We have the moon and the king of swords. So I feel like you might be dealing with somebody here who's very skeptical, who's trying to figure you out, who's trying to make a connection with you. They're trying to figure out why you are behaving the way that you do, how your big persona it's almost like they're they're trying to crack your secret. They're trying to crack you. They're trying to understand you. They're trying to draw out the the wisdom and the knowledge that you have spent many many decades trying uh, building up, and they're having trouble seeing you. The moon is about confusion. It's about seeing something that's not there, or seeing a situation through like a very. It's like looking at life through frosted glass. Everything is very blurry. Everything is a silhouette and it's, it's very blurry and you can't make out the features and you can't make out things in certainty. So the way that you are behaving with this person, you might be quite elusive. You might not want to engage and socialize and to reveal all of yourself. I feel like they're looking at you very skeptically. And I do sense that, you know, they're I'm hearing the word underestimate. Okay, like somebody might be underestimating your capabilities um they, they might be looking at you as like oh that's not a worthy adversary and then you prove yourself to be very transformative um to to be a force to be reckoned with and i feel like it caught them off guard okay so now they're kind of like looking at you skeptically and trying to figure things out okay so i feel like you might be a little bit of an enigma to them and it's um, difficult for them to make sense of the connection or make sense of who you are as a person. Um, I do sense here 
there is as well a very strong emotional connection that you have with somebody and I feel like there are a lot of um, ideological differences okay so I have an air sign and possibly even <coughs> excuse me let's see and even an earth sign so Taurus Virgo Capricorn Aquarius Gemini and Libra with this king of feathers this is somebody that is um, very no-nonsense and what you really like about them is their sense of predictability okay this is somebody that's like um, they don't talk out of the side of their mouth when they say something they mean it when they say I'll meet you at five they mean at five they're punctual they're dependable <coughs> excuse me and in some ways they might be that's that pillar of stability in your own life so it's somebody who's very predictable you know where you stand with them and you know like um, you have you have a really strong affinity towards them but I also feel like there there are a lot of ideological differences between uh, the two of you in this connection <coughs> excuse me that is um, it's it's kind of um, you question each other not in a bad way but in 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 there's a lot of talking there's a lot of conversation I'm hearing and I feel like they might be very individualistic and it's hard to be in a relationship with them <coughs> I'm so sorry I'm like I have a coughing fit it's hard to be in a relationship with them because the way you do things and the way they do do things would be very different however the saving grace is that you both are willing to talk things out like I do this because of this and they're like okay well I do it because of this let's agree to disagree so there's definitely lack of agreement but it's handled in a way that is respectful okay and so you're kind of like trying to understand another person from the inside out they're trying to understand you from the inside out you both are very successful in your own way I feel like you know they they rule the air okay they rule the air and it's like the king of the the the, the king of the skies um, the air energy deals with mental processes this is someone who's incredibly gifted with with perception intelligence um, they're really 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 smart they're very very smart but I feel like their intuition they don't trust their intuition because they're so rational and then on the other hand uh, you rule kind of like the underwater the undercurrents so you're kind of like a, a blend of the earth and the water where you're highly intuitive you listen to your intuition you might not be able to rationalize why you believe the things that you do only except that you feel right when you believe what you believe and you might not be able to articulate that to this person and as a result of it they have trouble understanding you and so you're dealing with this with somebody and the connection is going to be really strong I do see a lot of communication even if there has been a pause in communication it's going to be coming back together because we have the star which is you know um, coming through with the king of swords it's coming back together communication a revival renewal as well and a healing in this connection in this relationship okay so things are looking very good for the month of January I feel like you have a lot of things personally that you're dealing with you're gonna be quite busy this is kind of like on the periphery of your life but I would urge you to take the time to truly explain yourself because they're looking at you skeptically and they're trying to understand <clears throat> and it's like they have nothing to work with and so if you have knowledge if you have tidbits of information you don't know how to articulate it but I feel like it, it needs to be expressed okay so that somebody has something to work with here okay I'm going to leave it at that um, Virgos I do wish you the best and um, happy new year by the way um, I will be back for next month's reading hopefully very very soon so that the readings are not late 
If you are looking for a reader, if you're looking to book a private reading, I highly recommend that you book one with um, this lady. I have her link in the description box below. Her name is Bridget. She's based out of California and she is a phenomenal reader. I highly recommend her. Um, you can click on the link below to which will take you to her website and um, her website contains the, the scheduling tool, the calendar, the time, the time zone that you're in. It's very user friendly. Um, so that's that and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Okay, take care of yourself. Have a wonderful 2020.